So we're going backwards. We're going to have the answer. We're trying to go backwards to get to that original quadratic equation. All right. So our solution set would be in a set of brackets probably because they're going to go solution, uh, set notation. All right, let's suppose we had negative five thirds as one answer and a one half as another answer. All right, those were our two answers. All right, now, when we solve an equation, any type of equation, we get down to an x equals something, right? If, if it's a one-step equation, if it's a two-step equation, doesn't matter, or a quadratic equation, we get all the way down to the bottom, we get x equals, right? So that's what we're going to do. These two things I got from solving the quadratic formula, and at the bottom, I had x equals negative five-thirds or x equals one half. That's the very last line when we solve the quadratic. All right, I'm literally just going to go backwards. All right, now let's take this and move it to the other side of the equation because if you think, don't think quadratic equation, think factoring. If I factored it, what would I do? I would set both things equal to zero, right? So then that meant I had two equations that were set equal to zero to solve them. So Add five thirds to both sides of the equation. X plus five thirds equals zero. All right, do the same thing over here. Subtract one half. So X minus one half equals zero. All right, now think about when we do slide and divide and we have something that looks like this, what do we do? We move that three over in front because I'm trying to create two factors here, right? So slide and divide, move this guy in front. This is going to be a 3x plus a 5 equals 0. Slide and divide, if you think what we do there, we move that in front. So this is going to be a 2x minus a 1 equals 0. All right, now this is that set everything equal to 0. So now here's a binomial, and here's a binomial that I have formed. So now putting these two things together, I'm going to have a 3x plus a 5 times a 2x minus a 1 equals 0. Equals a 0. So I took this part and this part, two binomials, and set them together. Now, I don't really have a quadratic formula yet, but can I FOIL now? I can FOIL this out. So that's going to be a 6x squared. All right, depends on if you need to do this, all of it, or each, you know, inside, outside, and all that, or you do it in your head. Negative 10x for the inside. I'll show all my steps. Outside, minus 3x. Last, minus 5. Equals 0 has to be on every line because I'm trying to make an equation. Put these two together in the middle. 6x squared plus 7x minus five equals zero. All right, it said write an equation, which means I have to have the equals zero on there or I don't have an equation. All right, write an equation, I gotta have that on there. But I'm just basically going back and this one's not going backwards with the quadratic formula, this was going backwards into the factoring one. Because if I started here, I would factor here, set everything equal to zero, I would get down to the x equals negative five thirds at x equals one half. All right, now that one involved nice little fractions. All right, we can do this with irrational ones. We can also do this with radicals. All right, so I would like to show you an example of each one of those because they are going to work just a tad bit differently. Okay, so let's say we had a radical. This time, let's say we had a plus or minus two square root of three. All right, I got two answers. Okay, first step is always going to be start with that last line. So x equals the positive 2 radical 3 or x equals the negative 2 radical 3. It doesn't matter which one you put first. All right, now we want to get these things set equal to 0. So I'm going to move this to the left-hand side. I'm going to move this to the left-hand side. So this over here will be an x minus two radical three equals zero. This one, when I add it to the other side, x 
plus t radical 3 equals 0. All right, now on this one, I don't need to do the slide and divide thing. I, I don't have a fraction here, so I don't need to move anything in front of my x's. All right, I've got two binomials. Here's a binomial, here's a binomial. All right, so then x minus 2 radical 3, x plus 2 radical 3. Now, can I FOIL from here? Yes. All right, I'll show all steps. x times x, x squared. This right here, you're not going to like it, but you can multiply that. It'll be a minus 2x square root of 3, because when I multiply things, I just squish everything together. So I can legally multiply those two things and get this. All right, plus outside terms, again, 2 times the x times the square root of 3, t times the x times the square root of 3. I'm good there. And plus 2 radical 3, and I need to square that. Some of you are going to be able to do that in your head. 2 times 2 is 4 times 3 is going to give me, uh, what did I just say, 4 times 3, 12. All right, this term and this term crosses out. x squared, this is 12 plus 12 equals zero. Did I do that right or did I do it wrong? I just did it wrong. This is a minus, <coughs> which makes this a minus. Yeah, there we go, minus, minus. All right, unlike signs, so minus. And do I have equals zero? Yes. Do I have an x squared term? Yes, it's quadratic. All right, missing the x term, but that's okay because all I need is an x squared and therefore to be a quadratic. So that one was even maybe a tiny bit easier than the first one. All right. Very, very similar. It doesn't matter what I have here. Even if I have an imaginary number, okay, it's still going to be very, very similar to this. Okay. So let's do one more example with an imaginary solution. Let's suppose I had plus or minus 5i. That just means that my discriminant was a negative number. Okay, but that's okay. All right, so we're going to do what we do always take the two answers, set them equal to x. So I'm going to go x equals a positive 5i or x equals a negative 5i. All right, I want to set both of those equal to zero. So I'm going to move 5a, the negative 5i, sorry, positive 5i to the left. So this one will be x minus. 5i equals 0. Add 5i to both sides. This one will be x plus 5i equals 0. All right, again, I don't have a slide and divide type thing. I don't have any type of fraction here, so I'm not putting anything in front of my x. This is just a nice little binomial. This was a nice little binomial. If I'm thinking backwards, I were, was multiplying them before I set them equal to 0. So x minus 5i times x plus 5i equals 0. Now, some of you might be able to multiply this really fast because this is the factored form of the difference of two squares. So if you caught that, you could square the first term, square the second term, put a minus in between, all right? But if you don't catch that, that's all right. You can just foil it out. It takes a little bit longer, but you're still going to get the right answer. x times x is x squared. Inside terms are going to be a minus, and really the order in which you write these doesn't matter, 5ix. Outside terms, a positive 5ix. And then last terms, negative 25i squared. All right, this term and this term crosses out. Now, we do have to kind of mess around with this guy. All right, what do we know about i squared? Do we know? What do we, what do you know? You may not remember this from high school. Okay, square root of negative one, I've already told you is i, right? But if I solved that equation, could I square both sides? Could I take this and square both sides? It's an equation, right? So watch this, square both sides. So square root and square goes away, which means negative one is equal to i squared. That makes sense? All right, so usually what we do is we just tell people, oh, memorize that the square root of negative one is i and that negative one equals i squared. We tell people, oh, just memorize those. 
All right, but you can actually do math to get those so you don't have to memorize them, okay? So this right here is a negative one. Well, a negative 25 times a negative one is a positive 25, okay? So then final answer, I'm gonna have an X squared plus 25 equals zero because negative times negative is positive there. 